Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, a warm welcome to all of you from your past reality. Divine healing. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And for today, we're going to talk about in our meditation and study of divine healing. Know that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of the harlot? <coughs> God forbid. What? Know you are that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 15, and then 19 to 20. The Bible teaches us that the body of Christ is the company of the faithful. These words are taken generally in their spiritual sense, while the Bible asks us positively whether we know not that our bodies are the, temp the members of Christ. In the same way, when the Bible speaks of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit or of Christ, we limit His presence to the spiritual part of our being. And nevertheless, the Bible says expressly, No, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? When the church understands that the body also has part in the redemption, which is by Christ, by which it ought to be brought back to its original destiny, to be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, to serve as his instrument, to be sanctified by his presence, she will also recognize all the place which divine healing has in the Bible and in the counsels of God. The account of the creation tells us that man is composed of three parts. God first formed the body from the dust of the earth, after which he breathed into it the breath, breathed into it the breath of life. He caused his own life, his spirit, to enter into it. By this union of spirit with matter, the man became a living soul. The soul which is essentially the man finds its place between the body and the spirit. It is the link which binds them together, and by the body the soul finds itself in relation to the external world, by the spirit, with the world invisible and with God. By means of the soul, the spirit can subject the body to the action of the heavenly powers, and thus spiritualize it by means of the soul. The body also can act upon the spirit and attract it earthwards. The soul subject to the solicitations of both spirit and body is in a position to choose between the voice of God speaking by the Spirit or the voice of the world speaking through the senses. This union of spirit and body forms a combination which is unique in the creation. It makes man to be the jewel of God's work. Other creatures at existed already some, like angels, were all spirits, without any material body and others. Like the animals, were only flesh possessing a body animated with a living soul, but devoid of spirit. Man was destined to show that the material body governed by the spirit was capable of being transformed by the power of the spirit of God, and of being thus led to participate of heavenly glory. We know that what sin and Satan have done 
with this possibility of gradual transformation. By means of the body, the spirit was tempted, seduced, and became a slave of sense. We know also what God has done to destroy the work of Satan and to accomplish the purpose of creation. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil, and God prepared the body for his Son. The Word was made flesh. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, who is own self bear our sins in his own body on a cross. And now Jesus raised up from the dead with a body as free from its sin as his spirit and his soul, communicates to our body the virtue of his glorified body. The Lord's Supper is the communion of the body of Christ, and our bodies are the members of Christ. Faith puts us in a position of all that the death of Christ and his resurrection have procured for us. And it is not only in our spirit and our soul that the life of the risen Jesus manifested his presence here below. It is in the body also that it would act accordingly to the measure of our faith. Now, know you are not that your body is the spirit, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Many believers represent themselves that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in our body as we dwell in a house. Nothing of kind. I can dwell in a house without its becoming part of my being. I may leave it without suffering. No vital union exists between my house and me. It is not this way the presence of our soul and spirit in our body. The life of a plant lives in and pervades every part of it, and our soul is not limited to dwell in such or such part of the body. The heart or the head, for instance, but penetrates throughout, even to the end of the lowest members. The life of the soul pervades the whole body. The life throughout proves the presence of the soul. It is in like manner that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in your body. He penetrates us entirely. He animates and possesses us infinitely more than we can imagine. In the same way, in which the Holy Spirit brings to our soul and spirit the life of Jesus, His holiness, His joy, His strength. He becomes also the impart to the sick body all the vigorous vitality of Christ as soon as the hand of faith is stretched out to receive it. When the body is fully subject to Christ, crucified with Him, renouncing all self-will and independence, desiring nothing but to be the, temp the Lord's temple. It is then that the Holy Spirit manifests the power of the risen Savior in the body. And then only can we glorify <coughs> God <coughs> excuse me, in our body, leaving Him full freedom to manifest therein His power, to show that He knows how to set His temple free from the domination of sickness, sin, and Satan. So, my dear ones, we are in the half of the study meditation of the divine healing. I'm going to stop here for, let me say, two weeks because I am traveling to Arizona to work with the homeless in Tempe. So, I will not be able to do broadcasting. But I say it again, this is not the end of my broadcasting. It is a stop 
to come back again in a couple of weeks. So blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.